watching Wake Up Alabama on WIAT CBS 42 News. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me now is Michael Bergman with Bassett Hounds of Rescue of Alabama, an organization aimed at providing forever homes for these adorable, you can't see her yet, but these four-legged friends. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. And I know that we have a little cute little six-year-old Frida here. Frida, joining yes, ma'am. How yes, adorable is she? Yes. So tell me a little bit about Frida. Uh, Frida is... Uh, Six to seven year old, little female. Uh, she is heartworm positive, so she's got a little bit of that to work through. But she uh, came to the rescue from South Alabama, and we're getting her all patched up and ready to go to a, a great home. It's always that we were talking during the break, you know, saying the hashtag adopt, don't shop. Mm -hmm. How can people get involved in adopting a dog okay. from you guys? Uh, from us, uh, you know, you, you go to our website, uh, bhral.org. Uh, and you can look at some of the dogs we've got, some of the process that goes on. Um, we're on Pet Finder. We've got an adopt pet presence. And so it's really a matter of, of looking around and, and finding a dog. And if, if Freed is not your type, we've, get, we've had, I think we've got about 10 dogs mm -hmm. in our program right now, in our organization. Yeah. And so if, if Frida isn't your short and droopy type, then there may be another of them. Um, and this is what I want to touch on this really quickly. Um, yeah. The importance of adopting. Mm -hmm. I think we were talking about that instead of shopping. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's huge, we're, we're talking regularly about shelters being overpopulated and overcrowded, and there's just so much of, 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 of an inventory, of a volume. Uh, and so looking to adopt is, is really effective. Plus, the advantage of getting an older dog like mm -hmm. Frida is that you know her temperament. She's not running around being crazy. She's been nice and calm and quiet for y'all this has, morning. She has, yes. Um, I've barely even heard her make a peep. So, I mean, you get that sort of, you, you understand what their personality is like. What events do you guys have coming up? Do you have any coming up that people absolutely, need to know about? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, February the 13th, um, we're doing our, uh, our Bassets and Bubbles dog wash at Whole Dog Market over in Homewood. Um, we'll be there from 11 until 3, and, and BHRA volunteers will be there washing dogs. Uh, you, you come in, you, you pay the, the fee. It's, uh, it's a $15 donation, um, and we'll wash your dog for you. We'll get them cleaned up. You can meet some of us, Aww. some of the, the fosters, and uh, pick up some BHRA merchandise and just have a great Valentine's Day. Get the dog all Absolutely. cleaned up for their hot date. Quickly, yes. how can people get in touch with you? Absolutely. Um, our website is bhral.org. Uh, you can email info at bhral if you're looking for specific information. We're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and we're, we're trying to take over the Internet. All right, perfect. Well, if you want a little cutie like this one right here, just get in touch with them, little Frida. She was really good. She was. Thank you so much, Michael Bergman, guys, with uh, Bassett Hounds of Alabama. Just go to our website. We're going to have much more on this, and you can find out there how you can go about adopting. Well, now we're switching gears a little bit to some entertainment news. Award season in Hollywood continued Saturday night with the Screen Actors Guild Awards as controversy over diversity issues at the Oscars continues. David. Daniel has a rundown of the night's big winners. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Diverse TV. Um. <laughs> the 22nd annual SAG Awards turned into a show of strength for diversity in Hollywood. Queen Latifah was honored for the TV movie Bessie. And I hope that anyone out there who does not come in the package that people say you should, Keep fighting for it. For the second straight year, Orange is the New Black doubled down. Uzo Aduba repeated as best female actor in a comedy. A show that reflects and represents so many people. And the show triumphed again as best comedy series. Look at this stage. I mean, this is what we talk about when we talk about diversity. <laughs> Idris Elba pulled off a double of his own, winning a TV award for Luther and a film award for Beasts of No Nation. We made a film about real people. Uh, and real lives, you know. Jeffrey Tambor won for playing a transgender woman in Transparent, and Alicia Vikander won for playing the wife of a trans woman in The Danish Girl. Even the Knights' Lifetime Achievement honoree, the legendary Carol Burnett, recalled being told early in her career... No, 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 look, look, all the comedy variety shows are hosted by men. Comedy variety is a man's game. 
As for those looking for Oscar indicators, The Revenant star Leonardo DiCaprio and Brie Larson from Room took top film acting honors, and the night's big award, Best Film Ensemble, went to Spotlight, about journalists revealing sexual abuse by Catholic priests. This is really for the disenfranchised everywhere. This is for every Flint, Michigan in the world. This is for the powerless. A fitting end to a night that showed Hollywood's ability to reach and represent people through its diversity. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Other winners included Downtown Abbey's third win for Best Drama Series, Viola Davis's second for Female Actor in a Drama, and Kevin Spacey's second win for Male Actor in a Drama. Live from WIAT 42 News, with coverage you can count on, this is Wake Up Alabama Weekend. The battle for the White House is officially starting in Iowa as voters prepare to head to the polls. We'll have a preview of the caucuses straight ahead. And new this morning, all three escaped inmates are back in police custody in California. How they were captured in a grocery store parking lot. And breaking overnight, the search for a missing teenager in Virginia ends after she's found dead. Who police have charged with her murder. Some really important stories there that we're going to get to in just one second. But first, we got to check in with weather right now with Storm Track meteorologist Nate Harrington. And like we were saying, this morning was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But, um,. Might see a change up for the week, right? Yeah, we've got some changes to talk about. Yeah, another nice morning. A little bit on the mild side, some clouds out there, but we've got severe weather potential to talk about. We'll lead that off right now. Timing looking like late Tuesday, early Wednesday. And timing is the most important part of this whole breakdown. Right now, we have a slight risk for central Alabama from the Storm Prediction Center. That's the second tier of the five tier risk categories. So this is still a fluid situation, a lot of factors that will impact the forecast going forward. Just know that this is not set in stone and there's still a chance. It's not a great chance, but it's still a chance we see some severe weather. Of course, we'll break it all down for you in the Storm Track 7 day forecast, the main forecast coming up in about 15 minutes. Temperatures right now in the middle and upper 50s, lower 50s for folks off to the east, and 47. Alexander City still hanging on to the coolest spot in central Alabama this morning. Clouds have filtered in from the south and the west as a subtropical jet stream just keeps pumping moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico into the deep south. Those clouds will thicken up. And increase in coverage for this afternoon. You see the hour by hour, that's what we're going to see. Even though the clouds will be thick and the coverage will be pretty expansive, temperatures are still going to warm up into the 60s by noontime, upper middle 60s by 5 o'clock, and could see spots top out near 70 degrees for afternoon highs for today. More details on that severe weather threat and your complete Storm Track 7 day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Alex, over to you. Thanks, Nate. Well, whatever your political affiliation, you have to admit it's been quite an interesting year in presidential politics leading up to Monday's first in the nation, Iowa caucuses. What's motivating voters and what changed? Well, here's Chief National Correspondent Jim Osmond with answers on the political climate in 2016. Good Sunday morning to you. So here we are one day before the Iowa caucuses. Two of the leading contenders, a billionaire reality TV star, and a Democrat socialist, unthinkable one year ago. So how did we get to this moment? The open to the 1970s hit show All in the Family begins with Archie and wife Edith singing Those Were the Days. Those were the days. Which harkens back to a better time, a perceived simpler time. We have the most loyal people. Republican Donald Trump has been dubbed the Archie Bunker billionaire. The reality TV star Trump and the fictional TV character Archie speak their minds, political correctness be darned. The real life Trump calling for Muslim registries and to build the wall to keep out illegal immigrants. Archie likely would have approved. Among Trump supporters, they say they've had enough of the lawyerly splitting of hairs of the last eight years. For them, tying Trump to Archie is a compliment. I just like how he, he says how it is. It's not going to let the American people or our country to ever be played if he is the president. No doubt the country is in a foul mood, angry according to one network poll. It extends to the Democrats who have elevated Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders to a top contender, targeting anger towards big banks and Wall Street. 
today we are the strongest candidate. Conventional wisdom this past year hasn't proven conventional nor wise. The brother and son of President Jeb Bush has floundered. Former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum, who narrowly won the 2012 Iowa GOP caucuses, is in dead last this time. Can you make much sense of this last political year? Former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, who was a potential breakout star a year ago, is as well dead last on the Democratic side. Well, they can have their anger, they can have their fear. Simply put, something is up with the electorate. Archie may not have a vote tomorrow, but he very may well have a voice. I'm Chief National Correspondent Jim Oxman in Des Moines. Teachers at one middle school found a sweet way to teach their students how to how the caucus process actually works. They're using, get this, cakes and cookies. Cakes represent the Republican race and cookies represent the Democrats. A group of students vote on what type of cake they would eat or they would love to eat. And then another group does the same with the cookies. If one dessert team doesn't have 10 people on their side, they can do one of three things. Go somewhere else persuade others to join or just give up on their favorite dessert. Well, new this morning, two inmates that were on the loose after escaping a California jail are now back in custody.